Dateline, St. Petersburg, April 25th, 1903. This report has been taken across the border for transmission in order to escape the censor. Quote, the anti-Jewish riots in Kishinev are worse than the censor will permit to publish. There was a well-laid-out plan for the general massacre of Jews on the day following the Russian Easter. The mob was led by priests, and the general cry of kill the Jews was taken up all over the city. The Jews were taken wholly unaware and were slaughtered like sheep. The dead number 120 and the injured about 500. The scenes of horror attending this massacre are beyond description. It was 1903, and a report from what is now Moldova, which back then was part of the Russian Empire. Um, what happened that day was not a, a one-off. Uh, deadly, organized anti-Semitic attacks were happening all over Tsarist Russia at the time. They were called pogroms. They ripped through city after city, killing thousands of people, forcing thousands more to flee for their lives. One of the people who escaped the pogroms of that time was a man named Wolf Lieb Glosser, uh, G-L-O-S-S-E-R. He lived in a dirt floor shack in the country we now call Belarus. Uh, not long ago, his great-grandson told the story of their family's escape from the pogroms. Quote, Glosser fled a village where his forebears had lived for centuries and took his chances in America. He set foot on Ellis Island on January 7th, 1903 with $8 to his name. Though fluent in Polish, Russian, and Yiddish, he understood no English. The Glosser family started a business selling goods from a horse and buggy. Eventually, they opened up their own haberdashery and then a whole chain of supermarkets and department stores that ultimately was listed on the stock exchange. Quote, in the span of some 80 years, this family emerged from poverty in a hostile country to become pr a prosperous, educated clan of merchants, scholars, professionals, and most important, American citizens. The reason we know about Mr. Glosser and about the generations of his family who have gone on to thrive in America uh, is because that family history was published last year as an op-ed, but it was basically an open letter from um, the uncle in that family to his own nephew. The nephew being White House senior advisor Stephen Miller, architect of some of the president's most draconian anti-immigrant policies, like the Muslim ban, like the family separation policy that results in babies being taken away from their parents. Stephen Miller's own uncle called Stephen Miller an immigration hypocrite whose policy ideas would have wiped out their own family. Well, now Stephen Miller has cooked up a new idea for immigration policy in the Trump administration. Politico.com reporting that Mr. Miller is now leading a new effort to try to make it the Trump administration's new policy to stop all refugees from being allowed into this country. Not reducing the number of refugees or making it harder for refugees to come here. They're talking about ending the practice of people receiving refuge in America. Full stop. That is Stephen Miller's big new idea for trying to end as much immigration, legal or otherwise, that he can into this country. Even if his own path to becoming an advisor to the American president, to becoming an American at all, started in a dirt floor shack in Belarus, and a man who fled terror and came to Ellis Island with $8 in his pocket, which is how Stephen Miller got here in the first place. And Stephen Miller's uncle joins us next. Stay with us. Dr. David Glosser says it's been a while since he has spoken to his nephew, but this did probably get his attention. Quote, Stephen Miller is an immigration hypocrite. I know because I'm his uncle. Dr. Glosser wrote this open letter of sorts about his nephew last summer. Uh, now that Stephen Miller's big new idea is to stop refugees from entering this country at all, uh, and now that we have had a renewed national convulsion over the conditions in which asylum seekers and immigrants are being held, uh, we asked Dr. Glosser if he might want to come in and, and talk about this matter again. Uh, Dr. Glosser is a retired neuropsychologist, uh, and he's coming to the studio tonight to be here. Thank you so much for being here. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Good to be here, Rachel. What should we talk about? Well, uh, did you ever get a response from your nephew after that, after you first spoke out about this last year? No, I'm not persona incommunicado. Yeah. Um, you were so strong in your telling of not only your personal criticism of the Trump administration's policies, but mm -hmm. about how it relates to your family and what it would mean right. for Stephen Miller. I imagine that you thought you could maybe touch his heart um, because otherwise the need to make it personal uh, must have just been difficult and painful. Listen, I think people uh, understand that cruelties are being enacted, but people don't respond much to a uh, list of statistics. I think what people respond to is a story, a personal story. What hope I had of my, my nephew being touched by his own history, 
uh, was not very high to start with. He's made it his entire career and his entire persona is built on this particular issue. What I hope to do is I hope to raise other people who have the same history I do, and which I suspect you do too, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, all these people have come into this country. The question is, why did I, isn't really, why did I write this piece? Why isn't everybody writing this piece? There is renewed national concern right now over the treatment of, of immigrants uh, and asylum seekers, yeah. particularly kids being held on the border. Yeah. Um, obviously, those, some of those stories are devastating, but I imagine it may be heartening to you to see renewed concern, to see the investigative work happening, to see people uh, protesting, to see people holding vigils. People care, as it turns out. Once you, once you break it away from the idea of there being uh, thousands and thousands of people are being damaged and injured and hurt, break it down to individual people in individual cases. It touches people, and people will stand up and do the right thing. If they have the, if they have the essential moral values and they know what to do, they'll do it. I wonder, given your family connection to Mr. Miller and his yeah. identified role as the sort of draconian leader of the most hardline policies mm -hmm. here, I wonder what you make of what appears to be the political calculation by presumably your nephew, definitely by the Trump administration as a whole, that harshness toward immigrants, that deliberate cruelty toward immigrants, that terrible conditions in which immigrants are being held redounds to the president's political benefit. Well, let's break it down to the simple political calculus as it has recently come to the attention of the United States Supreme Court with regard to voter suppression action taken by the Republican Party. The, uh, the Republican Party has made the observation, as have demographers, that within the next 20 or 40 years, the United States will go from being a white majority country to being a white plurality country. So it makes, uh, as it turns out, the people who are not predominantly of European background are less likely to vote for Republicans than, uh, than, than for Democrats. This, of course, makes it problematic for them if they anticipate remaining in positions of power in order to advance their particular uh, agenda. Accordingly, it is not worthwhile for them to allow people into the country or to allow people to gain citizenship who may not be members of their party in the future. This is not very hard to figure out, and it kind of all boils down to that. The, 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 the part of it that I find hard just to stomach, just viscerally, is the idea yeah. that you would not just be trying to deny the numbers in terms of immigrants who would eventually get citizenship and the right to vote, but that you would somehow galvanize native-born American citizens, and specifically white Americans, uh, it, to excite them to vote for people who are being deliberatively and performatively cruel towards non-white people, that it would sort of mm. tap some sort of latent racist hate-mongering among a white population that might make it easier to, to, to elect a Republican president. What's equally repugnant is the assumption, apparently, among the, uh, among the Trump uh, the Trump administration that somehow the majority of white Americans are racist when I don't believe that to be the case. But that being perhaps their own personal motivations, they may project that belief onto other people who do not share those feelings. Now, Mr. Trump obviously owns that brand. He's proud of it. He's not ashamed of it. He doesn't know what the word shame means. The last time I'm old enough to remember, or you probably are not, the last time that a uh, major presidential candidate ran on an overtly racist platform was George Wallace back in 1968. Mm -hmm. I thought we had somehow as a nation grown beyond that and repudiated it. But now we see that uh, Mr. Trump and his, and his minions have legitimized race hatred as a means of sustaining and uh, gaining political power and influence, which, by the way, is not a really very new phenomenon in this country either or in other European countries. Dr. David Glosser is a retired neuropsychologist. He's the uncle of Stephen Miller, White House advisor. Sir, thank you for coming in. I really appreciate it. I know, that, know it's not an easy thing to talk about. Thanks. Thanks we'll be for right having back. me. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.